Welcome everybody to the Progressive Podcast, episode number 19 or 20, I can't quite remember. But on today's episode, we're going to do a Q&A. So today I answer four questions. Uh, question number one is, uh, how do I get rid of stubborn body fat? I can't remember the order of the questions, but another question is, what's better? Is it hit or less? I explain what each mean during the podcast. Um, do I need to take a post-workout supplement? And then the final question is, which is better, free weights or fixed machines? So I answer these four questions. It's a fairly short uh, episode today. I didn't have much time. And to be honest, I don't need to delve into that much detail with them. They're fairly straightforward answers. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. Okay, guys, question one then. So how do I get rid of stubborn body fat? Now, this is something that a lot of people want an answer to, okay? It's probably one of the most frequently asked questions, if you like. Now, stubborn body fat is typically around the stomach area, okay? It's normally the last place to come off and it's very stubborn. You kind of got to persist and persist and persist, be patient, and it's literally that. It's be patient. It's keep doing what you're doing. Maybe if you have stalled, then you need to alter a few things. But ultimately, it's keep doing what you're doing. There's no magic to say, right, now you're down to the stubborn body fat. You've got to do X, Y, or Z, okay? It's literally just staying in that calorie deficit, chipping away, if you like, at training, eating nutrient-dense foods, purely because that's going to help you maintain that calorie deficit. And it could be things like implementing cardio if you're not already or hitting um, a step target. So essentially getting rid of that stubborn body fat, it's just doing what you're doing if you're coming down and being patient and consistent enough to get there. Or it could be that if you're sort of not coming down and just going across, you've sort of plateaued. It could be adding something new in like some sort of new stimulus so adding more cardio, adding more steps, increasing your neat. Um, eating a little bit less, okay? So stubborn body fat works exactly like normal body fat. It just takes a little bit more time because it's normally one of the last areas to come off. The stomach is one of the most like stubborn areas. Um, the hips also. Um, for females, it can be the back of the thighs, the bum. Um, for, for males, it can be the chest. It can be the hips, like I've already said. So it's just persistence. It's getting through there. Keep eating plenty of greens, vegetables, fruits, uh, proteins, lean meats, fish, eggs, protein shakes maybe, um, having fewer processed foods, purely because processed foods tend to be higher calories and it's much easier to eat, stay in a calorie deficit, sorry, if you don't have processed foods because if you've got a processed meal versus a cook from scratch meal, the difference could be say one, 200 calories. Uh, those one or 200 calories could be used elsewhere. So if it's the last say 500 calories for the day and you've consumed it at five o'clock, that meal could be 300 calories and they could use those extra 200 calories later on when you get peckish or when you get bored or when you want something sweet. So it could then essentially top uh, add up throughout the week and then that could be out of your deficit or it could put you in your maintenance. So some body fat, it's just persistence. And I get it's frustrating, but you just got to keep going with it. Okay, so question number two then. Do I need to take a post-workout supplement? Um, this is kind of going to be whether it's for muscle building or fat loss or uh, I guess endurance or whatever your goal is, fitness or just a normal human being, right? That's what we are. Typically, anyway, if you're an athlete listening to this, then cool. But this is generally aimed at normal human beings that just want to change the way they look, all right? So do I need to take that post-workout supplement? The answer is no, not unless you want to, okay? So there are times when I have a protein shake. There are times when I don't. There are times when I've gone through having what's called creatine monohydrate. Most of the time, I don't, all right? So they're really the only proteins, uh, the only two supplements that are going to have a major effect on body composition, so changing the way you look. Um, not just by consuming them, you then magically change. They're not magic potions. Obviously, the protein shake can help build and repair muscle. It can help hit a protein intake for the day. Um, it can basically aid straight after the gym 
recovery, but there's this thing called the anabolic window that people go on about. It's not really real, so I wouldn't worry about it. That's when you see people take protein shakes straight after the gym, chin them as quick as they can because they think that if they don't take it straight away, <laughs> a bit coldy, um, if they think that they don't take it straight away, then they're going to lose everything that they've just done and that gym session basically means nothing. That's not the case. So I sometimes don't have anything straight after training and then I'll go home and have a meal just because I prefer to eat food than to consume a shake. The only times I take protein shakes, really, if I'm in a fat loss phase and I need to hit that, hit that protein target if I'm maintaining or if I'm trying to gain um, some muscle and some strength, then I tend to be eating more food so I can hit my protein intake much easier um, if I'm consuming more foods because I'm getting more protein through different sources of foods. So then I sometimes don't have a protein shake. Um, currently, I'm having protein shakes just because I want to. I just find in things like porridge and uh, cereal and bringing those back into my diet rather than having a fourth meal, which is a meat-based meal. I'm having a, let's say, a cereal-based meal. So to go alongside that, I need a protein shake. Otherwise, there's not enough protein. Um, so that's when I'd use a supplement of protein shake, okay? But straight after the gym, the answer is no, not unless you want to. Um, if you're going to, then maybe a protein shake. Um, but if you rather eat food, then just wait however long it takes for you to get home. Um, potentially already have that pre-cooked meal or potentially cook a meal. So what, 20 minutes? It's not going to make that much of a difference. So have, have that meal. Whatever you prefer is the answer. All right, then question number three is which is better? Um, using free weights or using fixed machines? So like the weight machines in the gym, I'm assuming is the question. Now, they both got their purposes, okay? Now, the typical PT answer would be, oh, it's got to be the free weights because it allows you to move more freely. However, I think machines definitely have their place. Now, if I've got a brand new person to the gym and they've not done any training before, I'm not going to go, right, let's go in the free weights area. Absolutely not. I'm going to go on the machines first, things that are basic movements that we almost want to build up to be able to do in the free weights area. So for example, in the free weights area, we want to be doing squats, we want to be doing some sort of hinge movement like a deadlift. And um, we want to be doing, say, sort of bench press, which is um, going to work your chest, your shoulders, back of your arms. We want to be doing some sort of rowing movement, so where you pull the bar towards you. Um, now, what I would say is we've got to build up some foundation strength first and stability to get to those movements, okay? So what I might do is I might do a leg press to help with the squatting movement, which is also going to help with the hinging movement to a degree because it's going to strengthen the legs and the joints. Um, we might do a lion leg curl or a seated leg curl, which will just help with the strength in the back of the legs. Um, we may do a chest press or a shoulder press, um, which is going to help with the bench press and movement or the overhead pressing. And then we might do some sort of cable row, um, which is going to help with um, engaging that middle back. All right. So that will help with your rows, uh, your barbell rows or your free weight rows, whatever. Now, there's things like lat pull downs also where you're pulling down vertically. Um, the only free weight version to a degree would be a pull up. Now, most people can't do pull ups. So most people are going to go and do a lat pull down. Now, if you specifically want to target the lat and you can't do a pull up, what are you going to do? You've got to do a machine, right? Yes, okay, rows and dumbbells kind of work your lats as well, but there isn't a vertical pull with, let's say, a, a barbell or a, or a dumbbell. Um, so you'd have to do a lap pull down. So they both have their place. Now, if you're looking at intermediate to advanced lifters, let's go intermediate because advanced is just, again, there's so many more to it, to it for advanced lifters. But um, for intermediate lifters, what you might do then is you might come in, you might be a little bit more advanced than the beginners. So then you might go to the free weights area first you might do three or four exercises with a barbell, with a dumbbell, um, and then you might go and move on to machines for the final portion of your workout. So for example, if you're doing an upper body session, you might do a barbell row, you might do a bench press, and then you might do a dumbbell uh, shoulder press, and then you might go onto the machines and to do a lat pull down, and then finish off with some face pulls with the rope or maybe a cable row. 
okay? So your first portion of the workout is typically the free weight, when you're strongest, when you're freshest, when in some cases most wide awake. And then as you get tired throughout the session, you then start to revert back to the sort of basics and you go on the machines where there's a bit more um, stability in terms of it's a fixed piece of equipment. So your joints aren't having to be like on 100% form if you like. Um, and they're a little bit easier in some sense as well, um, concentration wise. So for intermediates, you know, that's how I would look. I will touch upon advanced. You might see some advanced trainers or people in the gym do machines first, just as like a warm up. So for example, before people go and squat, they might, or deadlift, they might, um, what's called pre-exhaust or weight warm up, um, the quads, the front of the legs, the thighs, or they might do it on the reverse, the hamstrings, the back of the thighs. They might go and do some leg extensions or some leg curls before they go and squat, just to wake wake up the legs, if you like. Um, but these are typically people that are very comfortable at squatting and have done it for a long time. So they don't need all their neural focus on squats because they can kind of get into the squat and all of a sudden know exactly what they do. Whereas beginners and intermediates need to think a lot more about what they're doing because it's not second nature yet, right? You haven't done it as long, so it's not a subconscious movement. Um, so that is kind of the answer. You know, they both have their place. Um, it kind of depends where you are on your um, on your journey. Um, what else I'll add is as well, like beginners, after one, maybe two sessions, I will get them in the free weights area for PT sessions. If they're very competent at the movements, then when I create a gym program for them, I may include a few free weight exercises, but only if they're at like 90 to 100% on it. Um, if there's still slight dangers when they're moving, then that won't be put in their program. They'll just be given a gym program that is gonna help them get into there and help them with our gym sessions. So it might be that their gym program is a leg press, a chest press, um, a lat pull down, a shoulder press machine. So all machine work ready to build up to get into that free weights area. And then when they're with me on a PT session, when I'm there, when I'm able to cue them, when I'm able to correct them, then we would do free weights. So it's more of a safety thing than anything. All right, so just to summarize once again, it depends where you are on your journey. They both have their place. Um, and I like to include everything within um, sessions. Okay, and then the last question then, which is better, HIT or LIS? Now, if you're not familiar with the lingo, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training, and then LIS, L-I-S-S, stands for Low Intensity Steady State. Jeez, I need a drink after that. Right, so the, I don't think it's debated as much these days, which is better. Certainly five, six, seven years ago, this was a hot topic, okay? Oh, you gotta be doing lists. No, you haven't gotta be doing hit. You had all these different people battling it out, which is better. Ultimately, the best one is the one that you prefer and the one that you find um, you can do on a more consistent basis. Now, I'll put it to you in a way that I see it, okay? So lists, going for a walk, hit, doing sprints. Um, lists, having a steady cycle, hit, doing some sort of CrossFit style, Metcon um, circuit training, okay? Now for me, when I'm tired, the last thing I wanna be doing is jumping into some sort of Metcon CrossFit style training, um, doing sprints. It was much, be, uh, it'd be much easier for me mentally to go and go for a walk. Yes, it might take twice as long to burn as many calories, but it's so much easier on an effort level. So if you're somebody that enjoys hit, by all means, go and do hit. If you're somebody that hates hit but can get away with doing less, then go and do less, okay? So you've got to do whatever works best for you. Now, there's now and then when I'll go through a phase of doing hit and doing some sort of uh, Metcon CrossFit style, um, I may go and do sprints, I may go and run, but the majority of the time, I'm going to do less. I'm going to do walks. I won't even cycle, I'll do walks because it's the easiest thing for me to do. And when I'm tired, when it's cold, when it's raining, the last thing I wanna be doing is trying to hype and psych myself up to go on some sort of run or do some sprints, or I'm not gonna do go do um, circuits or anything, but walk, you just put a big coat on and you're warm. 
waterproof coat so you're not getting wet and you just pop in the podcast well that's what i do and i just go for a walk and it's easy you soon get warmish as well um if you're walking if you're doing a power walk so it's kind of for me it's better okay now for you it might be horrible so you might rather go and do a circuit training or might go and do a class because you like that environment the answer is hit versus less it's whatever you prefer all right so there's no right and wrong it's whatever is going to help you get towards your goal and whatever you can stay consistent at and adhere to and enjoy which is the most important factor